Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Ask a Moorings Yacht Ownership Agent. Before introducing Christine, I want to take a moment to introduce myself. My name is Chris, and in addition to being a boat owner myself, I get to work with members of this community helping to share stories of adventure, curiosity, and exploration on their boat. A few housekeeping items before we get started. Today's session is being recorded and will be published on mooringsyachtownership.com in the coming days. In other words, don't worry about writing everything down. You'll receive an email to this video once it's published. To submit your questions at any point today, click the Q&A button at the bottom of this screen. We'll do our best to answer all of them, but if we run out of time, we'll share an email address at the end to submit your questions. And lastly, there's a two question survey that will pop up after we wrap up today. We'd love your feedback so we can learn what you liked and things that we could do better in future editions. So let's take a look at what we'll cover today. First, we'll learn about Christine and her background and how she got here. We'll talk quite a lot about charter ownership and how it works. And then we'll dig into specifically on why the moorings and what's unique about the moorings ownership option. And then we'll talk about benefits of being in the ownership program with a section at the end for Q&A. So Christine, thanks so much for taking the time to join us. Uh, really looking forward to this conversation and your background and experience. So uh, tell us a little bit about where you are right now uh, and then also how you got here today. Hello, everyone, and thank you, Chris. Um, I am coming to you live from a Leopard 50 sailing cat at our Dania Beach, Florida office. Um, and like I said, my name is Christine. I've worked for the company for 20, over 20 years, 21 years. Uh, I started back in 1993 um, for Eight years, I worked actually in the vacation planning department. And then for two years, I worked in the marketing department. I was actually the boat show coordinator. Uh, I left the moorings in 2001, uh, took a sales job, um, doing something completely different as a selling software for an engineering firm. Did that for seven years. Uh, and then I just uh, felt, you know, the seven year itch. I wasn't so passionate about it. So I took a leave from the job and never went back. Um, you know, while I was away, I stayed in touch with everybody at the Moorings. We're really like one big family here at the Moorings. The people that have been here have been here for, for years and years and years. Um, in 2009, my now manager um, reached out to me and he asked if I would be interested in a sales and a support role at the base of the British Virgin Islands because the lady that was previously there, she retired. So being that I was born in Trinidad, I'm from the Caribbean, I'm an island girl. Um, I figured, okay, this would be a great uh, a great fit. They knew I worked in the Caribbean. So I packed up all of my belongings uh, in my Tampa house. Uh, everything fit into a 20 foot container and off it went to the BVI. And uh, I traveled on down, met my container. Uh, and I started back with the company in November of 2009, and I resided there in the BVI for 13 years. Um, I've just relocated back a year ago to here in Florida, but while in BVI, I was the only uh, yacht sales representative um, on the front line. So I basically met with guests, showed them on boats, um, talked about the ownership program, um, so it was great. It was it was a lot better than sitting at a desk doing emails and and talking on the phone all day. So fast forward to uh, September sixth of two thousand seventeen, when Hurricane Irma came uh, rambling through the British Virgin Islands. Um, I lost everything that I had. I lost my home. I lost all of my belongings. Uh, so that was uh, horribly devastating for me. So uh, 2018, we rebuilt the home. Um, that took uh, quite a bit out of me. And then two years later, a pandemic happened. So after uh, the pandemic, I sort of sat down and reanalyzed my life and thought, okay, well, let's, let's move on. So I left the BVI. And uh, yeah, so now I'm here in Florida. I live in Stewart on the East Coast. Uh, and yeah, and I've been uh, working remote doing the, the yacht ownership. I uh, love the background. You've seen, it feels like you've seen this business from every angle. 
with lots of experience. So couldn't think of a better person to have this discussion with today. I, I imagine one of the first questions you get is, hey, there are these three brands here. What do they all mean? How are they interconnected? What's what's the history here? So tell us a little bit about uh, about the three that we see on the screen now. Yes. So one of the first things I want to review with everybody, um, because I get so many questions on, on Moorings versus Sunsail versus Leopard. The three brands, and we're all under the same uh, uh, umbrella, the Travelopia umbrella. Um, Moorings and Sunsail is when you buy the boat and you put it into the charter ownership fleet, which is what I do. Um, the Leopard brand is when you buy the boat privately and own it outright. It does not go into the fleet. So the boats are actually built in Cape Town, South Africa. The builders, Robertson and Kane, they're an exclusive builder for the moorings and Sunsail and Leopard. Um, but just so you know, if you're buying into the ownership program, whether you buy a moorings boat or a Sunsail boat, it's the same program. Yeah. So just a couple subtle differences we can go, we can maybe touch on later, but moorings, Sunsail the same. And then the, the leopard brand is for private. And the relationship, and the, this is my understanding uh, as, a, as a leopard owner, so keep me honest, is that the the leopard brand actually came out of people wanting to buy the charter boats. Because like, these boats are amazing. Um, how can I buy one directly and privately without having it to go through the, the, the charter life cycle? Yeah. And then kind of leopard was the direct kind of yacht private yacht ownership option right you're absolutely right so the leopard brand came out of uh, from the success of the moorings um uh, brand of selling boats into a yacht ownership program and people were like oh well how can we get this same boat as a as a, as mm -hmm. a private and not going to the fleet so that's how leopard came about yes got it makes makes sense so th the next one is is why why do this so tell us a little bit about you know how all of this works and 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 why folks should consider it so so you know the moorings the longevity of the moorings is probably one of the biggest things we've been in business since 1969 started out in in new orleans moved the office over to to florida to the clearwater area the west coast and we've been in business for such a long time we are the original founder of the guaranteed income program uh, we are the premier charter company so people know the Moorings brand. They also know the Sunsail brand, but the Sunsail brand is very well known in the in the European market. So that's mainly one of the differences. But but why the ownership program? You know, for people that really want to spend time on the water, um, the worldwide locations is a big draw. Uh, most of the clients that I talk to, they come straight out and say, you know, Christine, I want to be able to charter in different locations around the world. Um, and this is a great idea for me to, to put a boat in the fleet um, because of our financial strength uh, of the company. You know, we've never missed an owner payment. Uh, even during the pandemic, uh, we were the only charter company that continued to pay the owners um, when the hurricanes came through and boats were damaged. And, you know, we had boats in BDI on the hard for years getting fixed. The owners still received their payment and they basically just went and chartered a sister ship. They went and chartered somebody else's boat. So uh, so there is a lot uh, to be said about the moorings as far as our history. Um, and just so you know, I love the moorings. I've been with the company a long time and, and I talk very highly of the company. They've been good to me. So and then, of course, we have the exclusivity of being uh, the Robertson and Kane dealer. So, you know, a lot of people say, I want to buy a leopard boat. You're, you're basically buying a Robertson and Kane boat. They're made specifically for, for the moorings, sun sail, and leopard. I want to uh, highlight highlight a couple of things you said, just because I, it, it sounds important to me and it sounds like it's a big distinction, but I want to have you contextualize it a little bit. So this idea, and I've, I've had some friends who actually had one of their boats uh, that was in charter, got destroyed in one of the hurricanes, and they they shared that they continued to get payments while their, you know, their boat was, um, I can't remember if it was being repaired or got totaled. So is, is that unique? I imagine a lot of the folks here who have joined us are, you know, talking to the moorings, con mm -hmm. considering this as an option, but also considering other folks who do similar uh, type ownership programs. Is that unique in this industry to, to, Hey, your boat is gone. The moorings isn't making any money, but we're, we're still going to pay you. Is that 
Uh, for the moorings, yes, it is. Um, a lot of the, you know, the other um, companies that offer a program um, may not offer the guaranteed income program. A lot of times they, they offer a, a, a program based on charter activity, mm -hmm. uh, what money yeah. it brings in, and they share a portion of it. And then it also depends on the insurance. We have top-notch insurance on our yachts where we can operate year-round um, at our Caribbean bases. Uh, a lot of the other companies during the hurricane months, the boats have to be outside of a specific latitude, yeah. longitude. So yeah. yes, and and the insurance, you know, if the, if the boat is wrecked, um, then yes, you do get a check for, for the insurance policy is 100% the first two years, 85 the third year, 75. Mm -hmm. So as the boat depreciates, you're still fully covered for the value of the boat. Got it. Thank you for that. For for folks who are considering this and you know gotten this far in the journey, talk a little bit about what you've seen in your experience in determining if this is a right fit for folks. Yeah, you know, um, I basically tell people, you know, first thing when someone calls and the, and I go through my usual spiel about the about the program, one of the main things you really have to explain to people is that this program is designed for those who have a lifestyle of spending time on the water, uh, whether it's sailing or the power cats in the fleet, you, you, you have to use your, your time and be on the water. Um, three to four we weeks is, per year of sailing is what we tell people is break even. If you were to run the numbers, say you get a quote for um, a charter vacation in the low season and then the high season, you take an average of those seasons. Uh, times three to four weeks a year over five years, basically you've you've spent that down payment and plus plus more um, to get into the program. So the whole idea is that you want to spend time on the water. There's no big money maker in this program. There's no huge return on your investment. There are small um, clauses where you can sell some of your time and so on. But but the idea is that you, you need to, uh, to 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 be able to get on the water because you know it's hassle free. We do everything for you. We we include all the maintenance, the the labor, um, parts. Um, it's you know there's there's no worry as far as the ownership goes. Everything is covered. Uh, as a as a leopard owner, and it's a great boat, but I you know, perpetually have a list of things to do on the boat all the time all the time uh and i love it but it's not like showing up and saying you know here have a great week i'll see you i'll see you next weekend um a couple questions have come in and i want to uh want to touch on so uh the first one is from Kiefer. i know that we're, we're going to show a performa at the end that that digs into some of the numbers with a link to it so folks can also see it on their own screen but Kiefer asks uh is the boat paid off at the end of the term uh and you know, maybe talking a little bit more about the guaranteed income piece, how does borrowing the balance not require repayment? It seems too good to be true to give 100K uh, as a down payment or whatever 20% may be on that boat um, and then get a $600,000 boat out of it after six years. So so talk a little bit about, or you could tell me, hey, wait to the performer, Chris, because that actually has the numbers. We could do that too. Yeah, yeah, and then we'll we'll uh, I'll touch on it, and then and then when he sees the performance. So to answer your question is, um, this is all going to depend on the financing. So the, the, we have a, a few preferred marine lenders uh, that finance the yachts for us that we put you in touch with. Uh, most of the loans are fifteen or twenty year loans. So uh, so no, the boat is not paid off after after the five years. We keep it in the fleet for five years because. We want the boat, uh, you know, to be fresh and, and to be well maintained. So we feel that five years is a good amount of time to to keep the keep it in the fleet where the boat still fetches um, good revenue at, when it goes out on charter. So once you put down your your down payment, your down payment again, we'll cover this a little later, but twenty five percent down. Um, if you finance the boat uh, and you do it over fifteen years we're basically paying your mortgage for the first five years of that loan. So some owners, um, uh, you know, if they want to keep the boat at the end, because they're not out of pocket any more money than their down payment for the next five years, some of them will pay extra towards bringing down the principal of the boat. Um, some of them pay cash and just pay it off. And, and when they get that revenue, that's, you know, money in the bank. 
So yes, uh, the boat is not paid off, but it's all going to depend on the financing that you do. Awesome. Uh, and then a uh, question here from Jeff. He wants to know what percentage in, in kind of in general, what percentage of people who are in this program are single owners? So single, you know, single, you know, an entity, a couple buying the boat, putting in charter versus like a group of people coming together, pitching oh, right. to do like a multi owner. Yeah. Yes, that's a great question. And I'm glad uh, Jeff brought it up. So we have, I don't know what the percentage is, but we do have a large, because we have yacht sales agents all over the world selling boats. Just so you know, I'm not the only one. Sometimes I do wish I was the only one, but I'm not. <laughs> so so um, a lot of our owners, um, I'm doing a contract now where it's two guys that are going to buy the boat together. They form an LLC, they split the cost down the middle, and they they you know split their owner's use. And it's, it works for them because, you know, we give you an ample amount of owner's time. So it works for them. I did a deal a couple of years ago. It was six guys that bought the boat. The contracts were a nightmare, but th that's how it goes. Yeah. So, um, and then we have where just the husband and wife owns it. And, and, uh, but most of the, the, quite a large majority, I would say is an LLC and they, they partner up with somebody, which is fine. Yeah. We, we do allow that. No problem. Awesome. So let's let's actually dig in a little bit more into how the process works. Uh, yep. Walk us through the the six uh, kind of boxes on this slide. Okay. So uh, I do this in my sleep. So you purchase the boat. Um, the the price of the boat is um, what we call a complete charter ready, all gear tricked out boat. It's brand new. Um, so we don't sell any used boats. It's brand new coming out of the factory. <clears throat> So it'd be the following year's model. Uh, the price includes all of the equipment. We send you a spec sheet, which shows everything that's included on the boat. Um, if we take the sailing cats, for example, they all come with generators, water makers, um, all the navigation equipment, front and forward facing cameras, lines, fenders, pillows, dishes, you name it. It's loaded up um, and put into the fleet. So you come up with the 25% of, of the of the yacht price and you're in the fleet for the five years. We keep the boat for five years. Depending on the location, the med, the boats that are in the med are on a little different scheme. We won't go into that, but those typically six seasons because the they have short seasons over there. Yeah. Um, we You get a fixed income. Uh, the income is paid to you every month. Uh, and it's direct deposited into your bank account at the end of every month. Right now, the fixed income is at an 8% rate. Um, you have use of, of the, obviously, the, the worldwide locations. Um, there's a slide later on that shows all of the locations with, that we have uh, throughout the world that you can you can use. Um, one of the biggest parts of the, of the ownership program, I think, is that all of the operational costs are included. So you will never have to out of pocket for maintenance, dockage, insurance. Um, if something is broken on the boat, if the boat has to get hauled out, if it's run aground, whatever it is, it's on us. Um, we keep you informed of, of the boat and, and everything that's going on. We have an ownership uh, care team that keeps you abreast of everything that's happening with your boat. And then, of course, the worldwide locations you use. So say, for instance, if you buy a 45 foot cat and it's based in the BVI, um, we have those cats all over. So you can go to Greece and use someone else's 45. You can go to Tahiti and use somebody's 45. So that's that's basically how it works. A couple of questions. Do owners get to name their vessel? I, I've walked through some of the bases before and I see all the names. I'm like, who comes up with these names? Yes. So they do. They do get to name yes. them. Yes, the name that and the hailing port. So typically where they live, yes, you get to pick your name. You don't get to pick the font. Okay. Um, because all the fonts have to stay the same while the boat is in the fleet. Um, but yes, you do get to pick your name within reason. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I can see some proposals. There's a few risky ones really. that have come across. Yes. There's yeah, a few risky ones that have come across. I, so yeah, we do have to, there are some guidelines, yes. <laughs> okay, makes perfect sense. R Rory wants to know a little bit more. So you, you mentioned uh, 8% return. So talk, talk, kind of return on, on what or of what? <clears throat> oh, yeah. So the eight, and again, you'll, you'll see it in the performa 
few slides down the road. So yes, the 8% guaranteed income is annually um, based, uh, but paid monthly, and it's off of the full purchase price of the yacht. Got it. So I noticed uh, I'm just connecting some dots in my head. Uh, the lending rate for a boat right now is probably right around the same, right? Piece of it. So folks who are financing, you're still, yeah. you know, you're getting the return during that period that, yeah. that kind of matches at least what the cost to borrow money is. Correct. Uh, there. Um, another question here, maybe two more and then we'll continue on. So Rory wants to know how many boats are in the fleet. Do you have a, a broad sense mm -hmm. of Oh my gosh, so many. Okay, well, BBI is the largest um, yep. and we have upward of 300 yachts just wow. in BBI. That's why I was there. Um, we, and then I think combined, oh, I think 500, you think? I think it's a little more than that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I would probably say it's somewhere around the 500, maybe a little bit more, Mark. I can okay. always find out for you, but yeah. Because, you know, okay. we're constantly, adding boats and then phasing out boats and so, yeah. yeah always changing well what let's talk a little bit about the usage piece of it so let's say that i buy a moorings 5000 and put it into ownership mm -hmm. and, which is a equivalent of a you know leopard 50 yes what, what types of boats do i have access to in the fleet can i go use a 4500 can i go grab a monohull like can i move up and down or just down like how does that how does that work yeah, so with the owner's use, um, what we do, it's based on a point system. Okay. Um, and then when when you buy the boat, you get put into a group. Um, so there's group A, B, C, D. So typically group A has the largest boats. If you're buying a 50-foot sailing cap, for example, currently that's the largest sailing cap we have. If people have been with the moorings for many, many years like me, you know, we did have a 58. The 58s are no longer in production. So now the 50 right now currently is the largest. So if you own a 50, basically you have a pick of the litter. You can use any boat on the dock and never have to pay an upgrade fee. You can take yeah. a 45, a 42, a monohull. Um, you know, that's fine. If you buy a 45 and you're in group B, then you are allowed, I feel our ownership scheme is one of the most flexible, by the way, you are allowed to upgrade one group. Yeah. So if you own a 45 foot, you can go up to a 50 foot. If you book it in advance, you pay the difference in the daily rate of what you own versus what you're going to mm. charter. The day. Um, or we have a really nice clause where we have what we call a short notice booking. If you're booking 16 days prior and you want to use the bigger boat and it's available, it's a flat $500 fee to upgrade, which is phenomenal. So, you know, even if you own a 45, you pretty much still have use of, you know, almost any yeah. boat in the fleet. Yeah. So, so yeah. So, so, but the, the only restriction really is one group. Cause if we didn't restrict the group, everybody would buy a 32 for right. one a hall. <laughs> and get a 50 and, <laughs> and have a party. Yeah. yeah. It makes perfect sense. And, and that short-term option, I know some folks who live on the, the, the East Coast who take advantage of that in the Bahamas because it's so easy yes. to get from Florida and, and a lot of places on the East Coast there and and do that. So two quick questions here. One, you touched on a little bit. Uh, Kamal wants to know, how far in advance do you need to reserve a boat for usage? And you know, could you, for example, take a boat out for a month at a time? Okay, great question. So um, as far as booking... Of course, you know, I used to work in the vacation planning department. So the system that we use uh, can actually book years out. Um, I was the, the vacation planning agent that handled the millennium, if you guys remember that day. Um, so people were calling up to book three to four years out for like Tonga or something or Tahiti, wherever the dateline went over first. So um, technically an owner can call up and book if you want to book your boat for christmas of every year for the next four years you can yeah so you the advanced booking period is pretty far out yeah um and then we have what we call short notice which is 16 days prior short notice is great you know um because we have you know quite a few boats at all of our bases you know i've never really known of an owner having an issue getting a boat you know, if, you're, if your boat is in BVI and you're going to St. Lucia, 
you know, you don't really care what boat you're getting anyway, because it's not yours. So as long as you're getting something equivalent, and if it's a short notice booking, if there's a boat, you know, typically, yeah, you, you can use it. I mean, I, as an employee, I, I went to Tahiti with three weeks notice and I got a boat. Uh, no problem. Yeah. So, so it's pretty flexible where, you know, if you're okay with, with taking, I mean, if you own a, a 45 and you have to take a 42, okay, well, that's not such a bad deal. Yeah. Yeah. Agree. I uh, want to, next slide is ownership benefits. One quick question about folks who are wanting to, to do a, a multi-party ownership option. Do you ever play the role of matchmaker? If I'm saying, Hey, I want to buy a boat with someone else. Christine, do you know any other people who also want to do that? Uh, no. Okay. All right. So it sounds like go go find we a got it, We got enough to do. We're not going to match make people too. Yeah. Facebook group. Might and be then next great. thing you know, they don't like each other. And then it all goes. <laughs> and now to, it's your fault. Yeah. And then yeah. it's my fault. Yeah. All right. <laughs> We've touched on some of these, but walk us through, uh, walk us through some of the ownership benefits. Yes. Okay. So of course, uh, so the ownership benefits, are, I, again, I'm, I'm partial to besides the, the the really essential stuff like your dockage is included and the insurance and maintenance. You know, we have a dedicated owner's uh, booking agent. His name is John. He's in the Clearwater office. He's been with the company, same as me. He started, I think, right after me. So he's in a good 20, 20 some years. Um, and he books all of your owner's use. He keeps track of all of your points. He's great. The owners love him. So he will become, you know, your best friend, basically, because you're going to be communicating with him as far as your booking. Um, but the, the fun part of the ownership, you know, uh, we do flotillas. We try to do owners flotillas uh, every year. We, we had to put a halt on it, obviously, from the pandemic and the hurricanes. But we are starting one um, next year. We have one on the schedule for May of next year, which is going to be great. We do it in BVI. We take moorings and sunset owners and uh, and we take them out for a week and we have a great old time. Um, so yeah, so the ownership benefits there are are mainly that it's a worry free um, way to own a boat um, with with the idea of at the end if you want to to keep it, you know, we're basically helping you with your boat payment. Awesome. And I imagine this next slide here is where we're going to spend quite a bit of time because there's some questions I've been holding on to until we we get to this. So here's an example of performa of a Moorings Forty Power Cat. The QR code on, on the screen here, if you scan it with your phone, it'll take you to the sheet. So if folks want to see this a little bit bigger uh, as they're following along, I encourage you all to do that. But Christine, walk us through kind of the, the, the format and some of the numbers here, and then I'll I'll pepper you with questions after you wrap Okay, up. okay. Okay, so um, this is an example of a 40-foot moorings power cap. So let me, first of all, just start by saying the main difference between moorings and sunsail is product. Um, if you all are familiar with the moorings, moorings has power cats, bare boat um, cats and monohulls, and then we have yachts where crew live on them, crewed yachts. Sunsail is all bare boat, monohulls and sailing cats. But as far as the make of the boat and the program, it's it's boat for boat, yeah. But sunsail doesn't have power cats. So the Moorings 40 Power Cat, I'm stressing on this one today because if anyone wants to own this year, I do have a few Power Cats on hand. So this is uh, what I'm going to stress on. So in this example, this boat sells at $9.99. It's available to own next month, October. So that is when it's going to be coming out of the factory. It's going to be based in the Bahamas. So it's going to live there in the Bahamas for 56 months yeah, is the term of the contract. Yeah. So you start from October and then you go through June of 2028. So the $9.99, you come up with your 25% down. The $249,750 is what your out of pocket is to be in the program. Yeah. So you send us that money. And then we handle all of the expenses. And then every month you get a check for 7293. And that is guaranteed direct deposit into your account every month. So whether the boat is on charter, whether it's having maintenance done, whether it's blocked for hurricanes, whether you're on it, you're going to get your check. Yeah, we've never missed an owner payment. You're going to get your check every month. Yeah. So it says, and then then uh, you can go and use that one in the Bahamas, or obviously you can go and use the, the power cats at the other locations. 
And then we also like to um, tell you what we feel the bow would resale for after the five years. Yeah, which is that figure there. It's very small on my screen, so I'm sorry I can't see it. Six something. Yeah, so that basically, so at the end of the five years, um, again, I think we're going to touch on this on a later slide, but I'll go over it now. At the end of the five years, you have three options. You could either keep your boat, sell your boat, or trade up for a new boat. So the trade up program is obviously the most popular with our owners. You know, if they're still healthy, they're still boating, they're still sailing, they love the program. I mean, I could give you referrals all day long of, the, I, I don't know of any owner that's only stayed one boat. Most of them, you know, they go another five years. We have owners, our longest standing owners on his ninth boat. He's in his eighties and he's still sailing. So um, if you, either of those options, we will help you with. So we have a brokerage office in, in here in Dana Beach. Um, uh, and if you want to trade up, we'll get you a mark, uh, uh, market value on the boat. Look at what your payoff is. If you've been paying down on your note and then we take it in trade, you wash your hands of the boat and then you roll into a new boat. So that's basically how that works. All right. Rapid fire. Some questions here. So Brian <laughs> asks, uh, if an owner pays cash for the boat, right? So they don't have the cost of borrowing money. Um, they're making 8% return on their money. Correct. Okay. Absolutely right. Yes, we have lots of cash buyers at the moment because, you know, the finance rates, the interest rates are a bit high. You know, they're sort of like equivalent to your owner payment. So right now you're at a you're at a break even. Um, so that's why I think some owners um, uh, feel, you know, they're all different. Some feel that, you know, in a year or two, if the rates go down, they can they can do a refi. It doesn't matter what you do. Your owner payment is going to stay the same. So even if you did finance at 8% and you're getting 8% from us. If two years from now you you paid it off or you maybe you wanted to do a refi and you got a 5% rate, your, your owner payment is not gonna adjust. That makes sense. Steve wants to know, do you have stats on resales at the completion of the contract? So basically what happens at the end of the 56 months? You mentioned most people go into trade up, but yeah. Yeah. can you parse that a little bit? And then in terms of like, Mm -hmm. average time to sell are there instances where that you know that number at the end the boat doesn't fetch that and like uh, i kind of walk us through yes first yes that. and and you know um there's no uh there's no hidden agendas with these with these boats i mean it, it, it's tried and true we've been doing this for 55 years so it's you know it's pretty cut and dry so at the end of the five years all of this is is very market driven um, so to, the best example I could give you was the pandemic. Um, if you guys online here on this webinar have been looking at boats and looking at this program and looking between yachts and ownership or private or whatever, you'll see that during the pandemic, we had over a two year waiting list for boats. They were selling like hotcakes. I mean, everybody felt that the best way to uh, socially distanced was to be on a boat uh, in the middle of the ocean. So that's what happened there was that everything, you know, skyrocketed when it came to the boats. So now things are starting to get um, a little bit of what I call normal, whatever normal might be these days. So where there, I've never seen in all the years I've been doing this, I've, uh, for, the, for the sailing cats and the power cats, I've never seen the residual value uh, drop below like 60% at the end of the, of the program, you know, and again, it's all market driven. I mean, some people during the pandemic, they were getting what the boat was worth, but that's a bit of an odd situation. I mean, yeah, yeah I mean, that was like a one-off, uh, but yes, yeah, just to give you an idea, we, we, the brokerage office will get a fair market value on the boat. Um, if you've, like I said, been paying your sock and your 8% back into your loan, Typically, you'll find yourself either at a break even. Um, most conservative owners tend to to pay down a bit more on the on the loan, and then that way they have a little equity, they have a little cushion. So when the when the boat when we take it in trade, you have a little extra, and then you come up with the down of whatever is the next spectacular boat we have five years from now. Okay, uh, good answer there. What's the max time you can charter a boat at once for? Nice question. Okay, so the maximum 
time, and this is a John uh, John question, but the maximum time is six weeks in a row. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. And uh, that answers Sean's question about, can you book all your weeks in a row? So if I get my- Yeah, because, yeah, so the point, well, we have a slide with the points. Well, let me get to that. I'll, I'll explain it a little bit more. Okay. All right, let's, let's talk a little bit about destination. So I have my Leopard 45, been doing up and down the East Coast Bahamas. Then I'll put it on a freighter and I'll ship it to the Mediterranean. And then I'll do that and have to deal with being in Shenzhen and getting it out of Shenzhen and all, all that stuff I'm not looking forward to. So this is very compelling to me. I could just fly across the world and go pop on a boat. Um, yep. But anyway, tell us a little bit about what this map represents and, uh, and where you all yeah. are. Yeah, so these are all of our lovely, exotic, worldwide destinations that your owner's use uh, is valid at. So the Caribbean, uh, we've got your two locations in the Bahamas, Abaco and uh, Nassau, Exuma. And then, of course, the largest base, Tortola. And then we've got St. Martin, Antigua, St. Lucia, Grenada, Martinique. We've also got Belize in uh, Central America. Um, and then uh, the South Pacific, we've got Tahiti, Thailand. Indian Ocean, we've got Seychelles, Greece, we've got um, uh, Mediterranean, we've got Greece and Croatia, we have four, I think three or four bases in Greece and two in Croatia. So you've got so many locations in the next five years to um, utilize. And, you know, I consider myself an owner. I don't own a boat, but I'm like an owner because I, I well, I don't sail as much as owners. I wish I had that much time, but um, my goal is to hit every single one of our locations. I'm almost there. Um, but yeah, that's the draw. This this is the draw. You know, there's no better way to see uh, the world than via the water on a boat. You know, your hotel's included. You get to go to different locations. You're not, not stuck in a resort the whole time and, you know, taxiing around and stuff. It's it's lovely. It's great. Yeah, completely, completely agree. Um, I'm going to scroll through some questions here. Um, some of these you might say, hey, talk to a, a a a lender, but what's the typical interest rate you you've seen on boat on boat loans or even with your preferred lenders? Um, so well, currently they're right at about uh I talked to Tim earlier. I want to say they're like at 8.2, which um just so you know, we are matching that on the performance on the price sheets. Um I mean, I've been in this industry for so long. I remember when it was 3.9. I really wish those days would come back. But <laughs> um, but yeah, um, but average is, yeah, used for marine lending, the average has always been somewhere between um, mid fours to mid fives. This is definitely the highest I've seen it. And you mentioned earlier the return at 8%. Is that, give us some context, is that is that high or are you there to match the interest rates so that so the economics of this work? Yes. Yeah. So on the performance now, um, if you request them, the, the people that are on the webinar and you you want to dig more into it and you request, you go on to the mooringsyachtownership.com and request the <clears throat> the performance, you'll see that we are matching the interest rate uh, at, at this time, you know, until things, uh, you know, we don't know when it, who knows, nobody knows when the rates are going to change, but you'll notice that um, on the performers with the financing, the performer example we just did was a cash one um, because of the fluctuating interest rate. So the ones that you get online will show 8.2, I think, fixed 15 years, and it'll show the income slightly higher than that. So we're and, matching it and then some. Okay, Perfect. makes sense. And in, in periods with lower interest rates, is that is that 8 percent on return always the same yes always yeah. the same okay yes. and you guys are just put, never pushing gone below some, some yeah. basis points to match the interest rate okay yeah even if you pay cash so for cash buyers they love it cash buyers right now they're getting an accelerated rate they're getting an eight point i, I want to say it's right around 8.5 8.6 return um so for cash buyers you know yeah. because the thing is is that we're not going to change the amount the amount doesn't change. It's only changed right now because the interest rate is higher, but it's always 8%, but it's just elevated right now because of the interest rate. Okay. Uh, and then one quick question before we go on to the, uh, the next slide here. What's the most common boat size that you see folks wanting to say, I want fill in the blank and put it in the ownership program? What is that? Um, all of them. <laughs> there has to be <laughs> one, they though. Want 
they all <laughs> return the same money, you know, so it doesn't matter. I do have people that call me up and they go, oh, which one charges the most? That's the one I want. Well, no, that's not really the one I want because you're going to get the return regardless. So, uh, but popularity, okay. Popularity in the charter industry is a four cabin, four head boat. That is the most widely chartered boat in the world is a four cabin, four head. Got it. Makes sense. All right. Walk us through uh, lots of information on the screen. The intention is for folks, isn't for folks to be able to read this line by line, but yeah, but that's why of, I have my own copy here. I can't <laughs> that's screen. right. Tell us through, uh, what kind of walk us through. Uh, yeah. What this is. So on this screen, you'll see, um, yeah. And it looks a little confusing, but when, once you, you know, look at it a million times like I do it's pretty explanatory so basically the 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 destinations the reason for the red and the blue is blue is moorings red is sun sail but you'll notice that because there was a time where um moorings had more bases than sun sail and vice versa but now we're pretty much equal the only base that is only sun sail is with Sundays um where you can use your time but other than that all the locations both have Moorings and sunset boats, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the columns is power cats, sailing cats, flotillas, and the school. Yeah, so your points are good at um, some sailing classes. Again, John could probably give you more detail. So, um, so if you notice in the orange column, all of our locations have sailing cats, but not all of them have power cats. So. Um, one of the really nice perks about joining the yacht ownership program on a power cat is that a power cat owner has unlimited use of the sailing fleet, mm. whereas the reverse is not true. Yeah. So if you own a sailing cat, um, there's a clause in the in the contract that you get two weeks of low season use where you could take a power cat. I know most sailors are like, man, I want a power cat. But a lot of the power, like I had a, um, two guys years ago that bought a power cat because one guy really liked to sail and one guy really liked to power. So they bought the power cat. And this when the guy, when the partner came boating, he took a sail cat. So it worked out really well for them. So keep in mind that, that um, you know, you buying into the power program, you have unlimited use of the sail because of the fact that all of the locations have sailing. So then you go on to your points. You get a total of 84 points across the top row. It's 42 points of advanced booking plus, and then you go down the column, 42 points of short notice. So you get 84 points in total. The light blue, or it kind of looks white, light blue, one point is one day of sailing in the low season. Very easy. Two points is one day of sailing in the high season. So that equates out to... Uh, 12 weeks low, five, five weeks high. So the only restriction we put on the owners is that you can you can only book a maximum of two weeks in high season in advance. So let me repeat that. So if you if you own a 45 in the BVI and you want to go for two weeks from Christmas to New Year's, the most you can book it in advance is two weeks. Anything outside of that is is fine. Yeah, and that's obviously so because that's our busiest time. That's when the company makes their money. It's a no brainer. Um, but two weeks, most people are fine with because if, if you're still working, you know, two weeks of the holidays is plenty of time uh, to go to go sailing. And then the and then the gray area is where the Mediterranean is closed. Um, but yeah, if you notice on the chart, um, high season uh, in the Caribbean, for owners, this is only for owners, is from December 16, the middle of December till the middle of April. And then the opposite is low season. So, and there's no blackout days. There's no shoulder off peak. It's very cut and dry, high and low. Um, so, when, you know, when you call up John to, to do your booking or you email him, you just tell him what dates you're looking at. He'll look at your points and he'll, he'll get you all set up and send you an uh, invoice and so on. Awesome. So some questions here we'll we'll uh we'll knock out. Um why no basis in France or Spain? Any plans for them? Um so Spain, yeah, I mean, you know, it's again, it's all market driven. We had a base in Spain and it did close um during the pandemic and whether or not they're revisiting um uh, as a sales agent, I don't know. <laughs> okay. 
on, on the financing side, I know that you all have your preferred lenders. Can can folks use their own lender if they want? Oh yeah, of course. You're not restricted to our financing. I have uh, I have a client going through her credit union right now. Um, I have one that did a, a home equity loan. Oh yeah, there's uh, lots of magical ways to get a boat finance. Yeah. Can you? Sean wants to know. Can you direct the guaranteed income, basically back into paying the principal? You just say, hey, go pay, go pay this off directly to avoid maybe some income tax and all that and have a lower cost at the end. Is is that possible? Well, one of the, the pieces of paperwork you fill out is a direct deposit form and you need to let us know where to send that money. Most people, of course, send it to the bank. I mean, the money is paid to you and you're responsible for making your mortgage payment. Got it. Okay. Makes perfect sense. Um, can you opt out of the program in less than five years? Great question. Yes. The minimum time that you spend in the program is one year. So there are there are owners that think, OK, you know, maybe in about three years, I'd like to take my boat and live on it and sail around the world. Um, then, yeah, sure. You need to give us at least a six month notice to get the boat phased out. We, we have to move the charters off of it and and get it all you know fixed up and buffed and whatever so so minimum a year six months notice when it, when you're ready to go but of course you're eight percent you're not going to get it anymore all right when <laughs> in the trade-up example so if i finish my contract one of my options uh is to trade up do i pay another 25 percent down oh yeah yeah so the new boat 25 percent down so again, this is where it's going to be up to the the owner. So so we have owners that during the five years, they will pay down their their existing note. And they sort of get a table and work out how much they have to pay in the next five years where they feel pretty comfortable that they have equity built in where I had an owner that paid it down where his 25% was covered at mm. the end of the five years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So every that's up to to you all to do that. We don't tell you what to do with the money, but yes. So it's like starting all over again. The biggest plus is that we take your boat and trade. So you don't have to worry about, oh my gosh, I got to list my boat and sell it before I can mm -hmm. get a new boat. We'll take it and trade. We'll take it off your hands. Kind of like a, you know, car, same thing. Awesome. What, uh, what credentials do folks need or experience need to be able to uh, go, go charter a boat? Um, I would, I would say none, just based on what I've seen out in the wild. I'm like, oh, um, you know, other, and yeah, I know so okay, again, that's planning. a, that's a vacation planning question, but yeah. because I worked in vacation planning. So what we did when I was working there is that they would get a resume, a sailing resume that they had to fill out with their experience mm -hmm. of sailing. So they, you know, we don't actually need certification per se for most of the locations, the Mediterranean, you do need certification. And I think Belize, you might need certification, but for the, for the other locations, they want to know that you've, uh, had some hours on the water, you know, how to anchor, you know, how to pick up a mooring ball, you know, how to tack, you know, I mean, they, they ask you the basic stuff. If you feel uncomfortable with it, we do have skippers at all of our locations, licensed captains. So if you need one to go with you for a day or two to sort of get you acclimated, then yes, then that's available. Okay, awesome. And then uh, one question here from David. Uh, I know the answer, but just to just to, uh, to to share it with everybody, he says, "Hey, if I'm if I'm chartering a boat, can I take it out overnight?" And of course, the answer is yes, right? Yours to go use. You're gonna live on it, yeah. Yeah, you're gonna live on it. You're gonna be yeah for a week it. or two. Yeah. Yeah, amazing. That's the best part. Nothing better than sleeping <laughs> on the water. When yeah. The nice and a nice angle. Yeah, I mean, there's bathrooms <laughs> yeah. and right. towels. And... That's right. Uh, one other question on because this slide or this charts on the on the screen here, for folks who go into uh, the ownership option with multiple parties, it, is there an issue with multiple people booking and protecting time and all that, or they they just call and say, "Hey, this is the boat. I'm Chris." And then next week, Jim calls, and as long as it's not over the points that come with it, it doesn't matter who 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 books it to take advantage of the. Oh, uh, oh yeah, no, no, no. Okay, so when it when it comes to booking your owner's use, um, the only people that are allowed to book uh, is the owner and the, and their spouse, um, or um, it's sort of grandfathered in that the if they're grown children 
they get to use the boat as well. So you can't, you know, John Keys gets completely overwhelmed with people calling into book. So it has to be the the person mm -hmm. who owns it. If it's a partnership, like you and I own the boat, then your name will be listed and and uh, your name and my name as owner privileges. And that's an internal right. document that we give to John. So when Chris calls in, he can say, um, I'm calling to book uh, my boat or whatever. So the clause that with the owner's use that we didn't go over is the is the um, guest use. So there's a really nice clause in the ownership program where two weeks of low season use per year, the owner can um, sell, donate, or give away where the owner doesn't have to be on the boat. Hmm. Yeah. So some people use it as a tax write-off. They're probably maybe part of a charity or an auction. Um, some people give it uh, to to sell it to neighbors and friends. And the, but the the nice part of it is that the owner and owner does not need to be on the boat during those two weeks. So that's the only exception that we make. Other mm -hmm. than that, when you book the owner's use, an, an owner needs to be on the boat. Okay. Do you get, let's say I have a 50 and I charter and go to use a 45. Do I get points back? Because I'm No. The, yeah. The points have no dollar value. They're time on the water. Okay. Yeah. And they don't, they don't roll over to the next year. You either use them mm -hmm. or lose them. You know, don't feel bad if you don't use all of your points. It's a lot of points and there's not a whole lot of owners that use every single point. Um, so yeah, because they don't have any dollar value, they, they just work out to time on the water. So whether you're using a 38 foot monohull or, or, a, you know, a cat, you know, it's time for time, point for point. What, let's talk a little bit about the cancellation policy. So if I book a year in advance and then I cancel two months before the date I'm supposed to set sail. Yeah. Do I lose that week? Do the points go back? Am I forfeiting? Um, I don't know. That's a John Keys question. I want to say, I remember John, I can verify that and whoever asked, I can email him. But um, I remember John telling me um, if, as long as they cancel 60 days out, then they get their, their, their points back. Okay. Um, I'm pretty sure it's 60 days out within 60 days is when the penalties come. Okay. I know we're going to pop your email address here on the screen in a minute. So for, we can uh, give yeah. folks a chance to follow up. So I, we, we've covered this right a, a bit, uh, maybe just a quick touch on this in terms of what happens or what are the options once the contract is over? Yes. Yeah. Keep it, sell it or trade it in. All right. Perfect. What's the, if, if, if I trade up and do another boat and you all buy back my boat, what's the value? Is it, is it the estimated value that's set in the performer that, that you're buying it back at? Or is yes. It um, yeah. Well, it's not a guaranteed. I mean, we don't do guaranteed trade backs um, because of the market, you know, yeah. and it's five years down the road. Um, but yes, I mean, uh, they'll, you know, we put, you know, we don't keep these boats. You know, if we kept every boat that we took in trade, I mean, we, we would run out of room. We already run out of room in the BBI. So, so mm -hmm. we put those, we listed straight away. And those guys are really good about finding buyers. You know, people really flock to the moorings and sun sail at the bases for used boats. You know, they know where the boats have been. They know the company's reputation. We keep a log on every single boat in our fleet that the owners have access to through the ownership care team. Um, so whatever is going on with their boat, they're not left in the dark. You know, whatever maintenance is going on, whatever oil changes are going on, the owners are, are so, so it's, there's no hidden agenda when somebody comes to buy a used moorings or sunset boat. If it got wrecked, if it got grounded, it's on the report. All right. David wants to know, and then maybe this is the, uh, one of the, the elephant in the room for me, and at least, you know, before <laughs> I learned more about this or, or even when my boat was new and I was so scared to, you know, get my first scratch and run into ground the first time. Uh, <laughs> once I realized that, oh, boats are meant to be repaired. Like they're actually built and yes. designed so they can be repaired easily. But but David wants to know, he's like, hey, at the end of the term, what kind of condition can one expect the boat to be in? What level of refresh occurs in inspection during yacht turn turnover to the owner at the end? How many engine hour, um, how many hours on the engine? You know, th things like that. So what, what can someone expect? Because, you know, you're going to buy this big expensive thing. Other people are going to use it. It's, you know, it's going to run aground at some point. Right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so let's talk a little bit about that and what folks Okay. Are. Yeah, great. Yeah. There, I mean, there's there's no hidden secrets. I mean, we're going to use the boat. There's no doubt about it. And, you know, the first thing I said when uh, I started this was, you know, I was the face-to-face -face in the BBI. So trust me, 
when I tell you, when owners would come up to me, they would come into my office and they're like, Christine, what's it? Scratch on my bow. What, what happened? What, you know, and they would go on and on and on. So yes, that, that kind of stuff happens. So what I tell people is you, you kind of have to, um, first of all, have a mindset that your boat is in a charter fleet. I mean, that that's probably one of the biggest things. And then the second thing you also have to remember is that the Moorings and Sunsail, we're the premier charter company. People pay top dollar to come and charter a boat with us. So, you know, you don't want somebody showing up at the base and the boat is wrecked or not working or damaged or something like that. So in the big scheme of things, we really do... Um, have to keep the boats in tip top shape for when, when it's time to charter. So yes, there's going to be nicks and scratches. Um, whoever asked the question, you know, once you become uh, or, or look into the ownership scheme, you do get what's called a phase out manual. If you want, if you're going to keep the boat, we send you the phase out manual and it shows everything that the boat is going to go through um, during the phase out. It's a very comprehensive, it's a live working document. It's a PDF of about 50 some pages and it shows everything that the boat is going to go through um, at the end. So that's if you're going to keep it. You know, most owners have no no intention of keeping their boat at the end of the five. So yeah, they, they just want to know that they're going to get a, a good trade value and trade up and go, keep going and, and go again for to another for another five years. But yes, it, it, the boat is going to get used. As far as generator and engine hours, I mean, brokerage would probably know more since I only sell new um, mm -hmm. at the end of the five. Yeah. What what to expect as far as the hours. Again, you know, we had a pandemic for two years where none of the boats went off the dock. So the engine hours are probably great right now. Right. So, right. Yeah, so those okay. are the things that yeah you have to take into consideration. Thank you for that. Two just two quick pieces here. We dropped the link to the Performa uh, in the in the chat. So if folks had problems with the QR code, they can do that. Uh, Jeff Jeff is uh, wanting to hey raising his hand. I have two people for a four person LLC that we're wanting to form. Uh, anyone interested? So Jeff, pop that in the chat so others can uh, can get in contact with you. Uh, okay. And hopefully that that works out. And then, you know, one question here is, I imagine some folks are on the fence a little bit. Should I go buy a new leopard and just, and go right now? Uh, or should I do uh, do the ownership program? So what are yeah. some of the factors that folks should consider if they're asking themselves this question? Yeah. Well, Chris, you, I mean, you're the best person to answer that. You know, you buy a private boat and you start getting bills right away. You've got yeah. maintenance, you've got dockage, <laughs> yeah. you don't have worldwide locations at your disposal. Um, but nobody's going to charter your boat. So you have to sort of decide. There's not a whole lot of competition between the leopard guys and ourselves because, you know, most people either want to be in the charter fleet and, and be able to sail all over the world. Um, some people, you know, uh, that might be a little bit uh, more high maintenance may say, no, I don't want anybody on my boat yeah. and they buy it privately. So yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, they're kind of two completely different to me. I, I feel they're, they're two completely different uh, schemes. I, I think so that the, you know, the, the bill is out of the gate. Very true. Uh, <laughs> the other part is just the, the, the mind space that it takes up. So I was on yeah. vacation um, in on the other side of the Atlantic for a couple of weeks and my boats on a mooring ball in New York and yeah. I'm tracking hurricanes. I'm like, where are these things going to go? What are, how am I going to yeah. move my boat? Because it's in yeah. New York and I'm in France. So even just the brain space of, of yeah. I'm not on my boat all the time. I'm not a full-time cruiser. Uh, yeah. So even just that part of, I don't care. Yeah, just, a lot of the private people, they, you know, even the ones that buy private, I mean, I, I, I think, I don't know what the percentage is, but I feel it's probably rare that they actually sail over to the med. Yeah. Or, I mean, unless they're living on the boat and they're going to do uh, uh, the ARC or uh, navigation mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff. But yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So a couple, I'm going to try to squeeze in a couple of these here. Um, and you're, I want to underscore because there's about 21 open questions that we haven't, we haven't wow. been able to get to uh, <laughs> here in the Q&A. So your email address is on the screen uh, for folks who, uh, we're going to end the webinar here in a minute. So grab a screenshot, take a picture with your phone. So once this goes away, you know how to get in touch with uh, 
Christine. And we'll try to include this also in the follow-up email that we send out to folks with the video. So if they have any questions, they can get uh, in touch with you. But I'm picking the last question to answer here. Who is um, the lucky question? Oh, man. They're all great questions. They're all good ones. They're, they're, they're really, really good. Um, we talked about cancellation policy. Yeah. Uh, I I'm trying to think, think if I, I think thoughts. we'll leave it at that. Um, I, there's, there's a lot of good ones here and, um, some of, some of which you've answered and then I'll let folks just get a hold of you directly. Uh, yeah. I just want to know who's ready to buy a power gap. Right. There you go. <laughs> the, the one that's uh, leaving the factory next month. Oh, um, and before I go, um, I also wanted to mention that we are going to be at the Annapolis Boat Show. Um, it's October 12th to the 15th. I will be there along with um, all of the new models. We're going to have the 42, 45, and 50 Leopard. Um, all the team is going to be there. Friday, we do an owner's reception. So if you want to come and pick some owner's brains uh, and be there at the show, um, it's a great, it's my favorite show, uh, Annapolis, Maryland, October 12th to the 15th. Yeah, it's a it's a really awesome show. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll leave it there for now. There's a two question survey that will pop up as soon as we hit end on the on the webinar. I want to thank everyone for taking the time and to join us and all the great questions that came in in the Q and A. And Christine, thanks for sharing all of your knowledge and experience uh, to help guide folks. Thanks, through. appreciate it. Yes, yeah, so it was it was great. It was fun. Thanks, thanks right. everybody. Take okay. care. Bye.